Hello. Hi, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, it's a bit weird because normally with our videos we're like a couple of weeks ahead aren't we? And we've got a bit of time to edit them but now is the beginning of July and we're bang up to date so this video is coming out in a couple of days time when you watch this on Sunday. Yeah. So we thought we'd give We're you... here live. <laughs> so we thought you we would give you an update of um how we are going to take our camper van to Europe for the very first time. Which is very exciting. Yeah. And you see as per usual you go on YouTube and you see lots of people doing it time and time again and it looks really easy and I'm sure it is for them but we haven't got a Scooby. So no. We're starting from scratch. So we have travelled to Europe a couple of times. We've done one road trip to France with friends in a car where we booked various about four or five different accommodations in sort of northern France and, and done that as much but that was all planned you know we've driven there. We've driven in Spain where we flew to Spain and we, we've driven in Spain but not really we just drove to the accommodation and around a bit um, but we've not travelled in Europe in a motorhome or camper van or anything before. No. So we started off, well I did, I started off by looking, the RAC website, we, we're not members of anything of them, was a really useful starting point because it told me what we needed for each of the countries. Now, we don't actually 100% know where we're going yet. Well we do, some of it. We're yeah. definitely going to Holland, we're going to Amsterdam. Yep, so we've booked our ferry in from Harwich to the Hook of Holland later on this month. We've got the overnight ferry. Um, just because I haven't got very good sea legs. Steve's got very good sea legs. Sort of sea dog me. He used to be in the Navy, so he's very good at that. Um, so for me, and still with back issues, not being able to sit for very long, I didn't want an eight-hour ferry ride where I could only sit on ferry seats. I'd rather have a bed to sleep in. So that's what we're going to do. It'll be fun. We feel like we're on a cruise maybe for mm -hmm. 12 hours. Um, so we're doing that. And then... About three nights later, we've got a campsite booked in Amsterdam for three nights where our girls, our daughters are flying out to meet us. And my brother and his wife, who've been exploring like Norway, Sweden up there, they're, yeah, they're coming Europe. down to meet us. They've booked on the campsite as well. So we've booked a cabin for the girls and we've got the two camper vans there. So we're going to have a few days exploring Amsterdam and the sites there. Then we have no real plans apart from we definitely want to go to Antwerp to visit a war grave. <laughs> Sounds such a delightful holiday, doesn't it? We're going to go and look at war graves. But our great uncle's war grave is there and we want to go and pay our respects and visit that. So we don't know if we're going to do Germany. We know we're going to do France because we've booked our ferry back from Dunkirk. And Belgium. Well, yeah, we know we're going to do Belgium. So we might do Germany, we're not sure. Um, so, yeah, the RAC website was really helpful for knowing what items you need to pack and what um, documentation you need, what airs or les air stickers you need, that kind of stuff. So, let's tell you what we've got ready. Obviously, Steve's really quiet because he hadn't done any of this preparation. <laughs> no idea. Travelling to Europe, lots of places in France, Belgium and Germany require you to have sort of, what would you describe it as, like the cl like clean air, it's like a clean air tax almost isn't it? Or to be sure that your, your vehicle is allowed to go in those areas. Yeah. I'm not doing a very good job. I guess it's a bit me. like the ULES thing, whatever it's called in London. Yeah. But I don't really know. Um, yeah, so our van is, oh god, Euro 6. Euro 6, so it's pretty, pretty good for the environment, but it's not the it's worst. Not as bad, it's not as bad as it could be. It's not as bad as it could be. So, to travel um, in Germany, you need a green sticker, and that, oh, I don't know, it was about €4, Euros, so it's not expensive at all. Um, it's all in German, I've no idea, I guess you just open it and stick it on. Clever flash mousse, <laughs> I don't know what any of that means. Um, yeah, so we've got a green one for there. And then we have got um, 
a yellow one for France. So there's certain areas of France that you can travel. Again, that was like four euros or something. They're not expensive. And then for Belgium, there is... Um, is it a chocolate? Just get chocolate? No. Oh. So you have to register your vehicle for Brussels. That's a separate website. Um, for the, I think it's called Les Air or something like that, I don't know. Um, and then there's bits that sprout off of that, isn't there? All over the place. Oh, you're talking about Brussels sprouts. Yeah, oh, it's a good joke, isn't it? No. Um, and then you need to do one for Ghent and Antwerp. So I did the one for Ghent first, then went on to the Antwerp one, and then you get the, the um, what do you call it? The confirmation email and actually you only need to do one and it, it was valid for both but it wasn't clear on the website that that was the thing but those ones um i don't think you paid for those ones i think those ones you just have to register your vehicle um and i guess there must be cameras that pick you up um whether you're driving through but we don't know 100 percent if we're going to be driving into those areas but it's not the kind of admin i want to be doing whilst we were away because it was a bit faffy you had to get your v5 out and put loads of information in from from that so let's get these stickers on before we lose them It's worth noting that all of those registrations all have different time lengths on them. So if you do them, um, it's probably worth keeping a note of what they are, but I haven't, clearly haven't done that yet, but I will write it in my diary. So the other thing we need for travelling in a couple of the countries is you have to have a first aid kit, which probably you should have anyway. It's always useful to have some stuff. Um, Having a paramedic in the family, we are the worst. Our first aid kits are always an absolute joke, aren't Over, they? Overrated. Um, we have been known to use paper and, or tissue and sellotape. Does a good a job. <laughs> and a couple of the countries, you have to have a high vis for every person travelling in the vehicle. Um, so we've got a couple of those cheapy ones off Amazon. And the red warning triangle. Do we know where that is? In the back. Let's go for check. It's there. So this is um, a little pack. I think actually this came in a car when we bought it. We were lucky enough to buy a brand new car and I think it came with that. So I've never really opened it, but this has got a red red warning triangle in it. It's probably got a really out... Yeah, look, see? Well, good paramedic me. Uh, went out of date. 2017. So you go, that'll be fine. So that'll be all right. Um, so yeah, got more first aid kit there. Oh, we've actually got another fluorescent jacket as well. So there we go. And um, our red warning triangle. Never been out of the packet. Hopefully never will, but we've got one anyway. Also got um, some beam reflectors, because obviously we drive on the left-hand side of the road here, and Europe drive on the right-hand side of the road. So we need to change our headlights. So I've brought these. Now again, no idea how they work, how to fit them. Apparently they fit all vehicles. That's what the website assured me. So probably going to get them out now and have a look at them for a little bit. I won't film it and bore you with it even more, but just make sure we're familiar with how they work before we actually get there. Chances are we're not probably going to drive in the dark anyway, but you know, let's be safe and sorry. So I've cut the um, top of these Euro light beam reflector things and have a quick look at the instructions. Well, you're reading the instructions first, are you, before you're trying to fit them? Find your, <laughs> part A, find your vehicle. No, it doesn't. That's what it says. <laughs> but, hey, find your vehicle. It means out on the dating list, not as in physically find your vehicle. Oh, tick, we've done it. <laughs> uh, right, where are we? Volkswagen. Oh my word. <laughs> what? There you go, quite simple, straightforward instruction. This is why you should never read instructions. Just make things so more complicated. Right, where's the V's? Uh, G, G for golf. V, oh, they're not even alphabetical order. Oh, here we go. V, W, Crafter, Van, Camper, E, O, S, O, 7, 2006. 
<laughs> Should we just not drive in the dark? <laughs> I mean, Chef and Ada, guys, come on. Why is everything so complicated? Do they go outside? No, I mean, like, on. No. Do they go outside? No, you put them on the dashboard. No, I didn't mean that. I mean, like, on the plastic bit on the outside. Yes. You don't, stickers. like, take the. Oh, no, well, I hope not. I don't think so, no. Outside bit. Oh, that wasn't a stupid question, then. Well, that was a bit of a stupid Little question. Bugger. <laughs> okay, well, we'll do that another day. <laughs> but at least we've got them ready. And we know they definitely fit this vehicle, so. There we go. 10 minutes before we're due to drive in the dark, we'll get that out. It's summer. We just keep going north, landing the midnight sun and all that. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't look at the filthy, dirty van. We will be cleaning it before we go. But obviously, because we're traveling in Europe, we need to have a UK sticker. Job done. Bosh. Now, we don't need the angles and mort signs just yet, no, do we? No, because we're not overweight yet. <laughs> we're not registered over that yet. That's a whole new world. Lots of people have asked us recently about the weight and we've said for weeks now that we're going to do a video about it but it's still going on. Not because anything's being dragged out, we just haven't got around to doing it properly yet. So we're working on it. So we are legal. This is going to be a recurring thing now where we've got this sticker on everywhere we go. It just needs to be straight. It just needs to be straight. There we go. Don't you mess it up. <laughs> Stop it. Okay, so another thing I've got organised is a folder of hard copies of documents. Um, so we've got everything in there that we're going to need is just organised and we'll keep it obviously in a really secure place. So we've got our passports um, and we've double checked the dates and everything on that. You must make sure that your passport is not older than 10 years old. What used to happen was passports would, when you renewed your passport, they'd add on the extra months you got left, which meant some could be over 10 years old. Um, and we've just seen um, a lovely friend, a lovely Instagram friend who tried to travel to France and her passport was over 10 years old and she was refused entry to go. So make sure you check that. So we've double checked ours and ours are all good. Um, and the other thing we've got is our G Hicks, which is our um, health sort of insurance cards. Um, so we've got those all safe in our folder. The next thing is our V5 document, um, a hard copy of that. Um, you know, we've, we've seen a, um, people at ports getting all of that checked. So it's really important you've got that with you. And then my next section is all the hard copies of our um, air quality registrations. Because obviously the Belgium ones are just registered. You don't get a sticker or anything for those. So I've got all those just in case we get stopped or checked or anything. Um, because trying to find things on email, if you've got dodgy signal, that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, I've got all of, all of those saved, printed and in a, in a folder there. I've also got hard copies of our ferry tickets, just in case, you know, it's just easier, isn't it, than, you know, your phone or whatever, lose your phone or that kind of thing. I'm just, like, got planning worst case scenario here. Um, and then the other thing I've got, I was advised by um, my brother to have these, is um, a European accident statement. So I've got two copies in there. Heaven forbid touch wood doesn't happen, that we um, have an accident. This just means that you make sure you get all of the information you need um, from the other people involved in the accident. Um, they can fill it out. Um, it just, you know, just peace of mind, that kind of thing. Um, it gets you to tick off everything so you don't forget. Um, you know, obviously we carry a camera around with us, so there's a likelihood if anything did happen, we'd film conversations or whatever um but it does have some help for your advice there don't get angry be polite and keep calm um so just i <laughs> know they're good aren't they just keep calm <laughs> carry on so i've got those just in case there uh, got our van
fun insurance documents all printed off and in here as well um, so that if we need those phone numbers that kind of thing I've got a book with phone numbers of all our European breakdown cover our insurance health insurance all of that kind of stuff I've got all the phone numbers saved and that so you know if we lose phones or anything like that we've got it in a book as well obviously we are planning ahead and I'm sure people go and completely wing it and everything however you know it's our first time going in our little house across to Europe so we just want to make sure we've got everything we need um, we'll store that safely on our travels um, and obviously this is going out before we go to Europe so if there's anything forgotten we've forgotten please let us know um, but we've tried to be really thorough in our research and like I said earlier the RAC website has actually been really helpful it gives all, all the um, driving guidance all the the um, what do you call it the speed limits all of the road rules all of that kind of stuff on there so it's really worth having a little look on that if you're not sure of what to do so steve is just having an explore of how to get the spare wheel off i mean to be fair this is probably a very wise <laughs> wise thing to do i know how to lower it and it's got the cable, but I don't know actually how to get it off the safety bit. I mean, maybe I should just read the instructions from the manual. Probably a smart idea. So, classic uh, male approach to anything. Try first, can't do, get instruction book. It's easy. Sustitch, don't... Need instructions, just worked out myself. There we go. Spare Ooh, wheel. Dusty. Probably a very, very good idea figure out how to get your spare wheel off before you stuck at the side of the road. On the wrong side of the road in a country where you can't speak the language. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, got it off, now put it back on again. Woo I'm glad we did that. So we've spoken about first aid kits, um, but I've also got sort of like a medicine-y type cabinet that we're going to bring as well. Um, I don't know if they work. I've read good things about them, but we've heard that the mosquitoes are really bad in Europe at the moment. So we've got some of these bands that have got sort of citronella, peppermint, lemongrass and eucalyptus oil on. Um, so you can put them around your ankle or your wrist and they give you 300 hours of protection. Now, Steve and I are very prone to being bitten. Um, so... We're going to make sure that we're going to be safe and you know we particularly like going to like forests and water particularly with our kayak so we need to make sure that we're going to be okay got some insect protection spray as well and the other things we have got for protecting us against um insects is i've got some citronella wax melts and then um a little like oil burner just a tiny one to be able to sort of light if we're sitting out or if we're in the van and we want to just have some scent i don't know if it works but i'll give anything a go plus it will smell lovely anyway um and the other thing that we've heard good things about is the avon skin so soft and i think because that's got essential oils in if you spray that on your legs and arms um you don't get bitten so we do have some of that as well um, but the other things we've got in the first aid kit eye drops always good because we have terrible hay fever and a nasal wash always good because we always have terrible hay fever first defense i love this stuff so if you've been in busy um things like ferries where there's air conditioning and stuff a bit of a squirt of that any germs that are in the air get rid um Painkillers. I won't be taking those, friends. Don't worry. I, you know, I know I can't have those. So ibuprofen. I've got some paracetamol. I'm taking my codeine in case my back plays up. We've got 
Gaviscon, we've got antihistamine in case of bites and things, IBS sort of tummy pepperminty stuff, antiseptic wipes, after bite, antiseptic cream, hay fever spray, some alco gel, and then we've got another tiny little pack of plasters. They're good for taking out on a walk. So just a few bits and bobs so that you you know if you need them. Um, You've got, um, you haven't got to end up trying to go anywhere to a pharmacy or supermarket and try and find anything. It's not really any different to what we use to travel in the UK anyway. We just make sure we've got all of that in. Yeah. Let us know if there's anything we've forgotten. <laughs> We're uh, really sorry if the camera's, the mic picking up loads of banging in the background. <laughs> Neighbours being noisy. We're always quiet. Oh gosh. <laughs> um, right, so time to pack the garage. Um, if you're interested, I like being nosy on people's YouTubes and their camper van videos and stuff to see what um, what they're taking with them. So we are going to pack up our garage with all of the things that we use when we go camping. <laughs> so we have got our capsule bucket with a scrubbing brush for all those times you need a capsule bucket yeah. and a scrubbing brush. Our collapsible bucket's good for doing a short grey waste empty, isn't it? Yeah. We've got our table, we've got our chocks, talked about that already, triangle and stuff. Brolly, just in case. We have got my universal towel that's for cleaning stuff down, wiping extent, um, power cables, the back, whatever. It's just a skanky towel for stuff. Um, emergency spares for Chell's brother, because something's <laughs> gone wrong with their van, so we can take that with us when we go as well. We've got our two Helinox chairs, which I haven't packed away properly yet. They're ready to go. And we've got our Cheryl's mat in case she needs a mat or something. <laughs> Why are you saying Cheryl's mat? Because it's your mat, you put it in there. It's a doormat, it's in case it's muddy got a outside. Got to wipe your feet on. Toolbox filled with every tool you could possibly need, apart from the one you actually do need when, it, when you need it. Yeah. It's useful, particularly when you've built the van yourself. Um, I think every trip we've been on we've needed something, haven't we? Yeah. Empty water canister to get water if you need it. If you can't for any reason get your van close enough to a tap. I mean, I'm going to have to repack this. <laughs> We've got our boxes we talked about before in a previous video. Feel free to go back and look at it. Wheelie boxes. Wheelie boxes. So we've got electric cable, spare power cord, and um, what's this thing called? Tarp. Tarp. Quite a bit of shade. Yeah, so we haven't got um, an awning, as you know. Don't think we're going to get one. We didn't really use the one on the motorhome very much. And we, like nowadays, we don't really go to campsites as much. But we've got the tarp and then we've got... Um, where they all are? Oh, there's some that side. We've got some magnetic hooks so we can magnet onto the side of the van to create a bit of shade if we need to. Welly boots for British summer. We don't need to take them to Europe. Swap them for walking boots. No. Oh, bloody boot. <laughs> <laughs> so our barbecue come fire pit fits, nice, nice and clean. Fits well it's been used, isn't it? It fits into this bag. Um so it's it's good if you go anywhere that you're allowed a fire or you can barbecue. You can carry that to a beach if you want to have a barbecue on the beach. Bag of charcoal. Hanging up your clothes dry. Yep. Yeah. We're going away for the longest time we've ever gone away. Um, so it's likely we're going to need to wash some pants. <laughs> Imagine the scene, Steve. Your holy box of shorts all hanging out. Not religious. Uh, Kavak spare gas cylinder. I've got two of these, but one is plenty for us to last for yeah. a few weeks. Um, we love our Kadak. We love being able to cook outside. Um, yeah. Somebody many, many weeks ago told me off for, oh, I don't know if it's in the shot or not. Somebody many weeks ago told me off because we still got the stickers on the boxes. We're not peeled them off. Who but told you off for that? I can't remember somebody in the comments, but can't be bothered, so it's staying there. <laughs> Honestly, that's all that bothers you in your life. Happy life. <laughs> Walking boots, even though it's the summer, these are essential. We like to go on adventurous walks. Um, so these and a pair of shorts, happy days. 
Steve's going to have a fit. Look at my packing. <laughs> What's special about these walking boots, Cheryl? These walking boots are Steve's walking boots. And they... Have done the... They have done the Yorkshire Three Peaks. Go back and watch a previous video if you want to see Steve walking up a mountain with three hormonal women. <laughs> okay, next, life jackets. That's your one, anyway. Um, yes, life jackets to um, for the ferry. I'm nervous. I'm a nervous sailor. No, I'm joking. Um, we have a inflatable kayak that we will be packing. Um, clearly, this packing sitch is not going so well now. But we'll sort it out in a second. Very important. Uh, my sailing gloves. <laughs> We're not going sailing, but they um, help me not get blisters when I'm paddling. And then we've got the um, waterproof phone cases and the float for our GoPro. Our GoPro is very waterproof, but it would sink. So we've got a float there for the GoPro so we can film when we go kayaking. Our... <coughs> oh, well, that's clearly yours. Does anyone else's partner do this annoying thing where they tie crisp packets in knots and then just leave them everywhere? That's just fallen out of our dry bag. So we've got a dry bag that we can then take with us in the kayak if we've got any electricals or cloves or anything, obviously, that we want to keep dry. We've got our dry bag as well. Uh, our pump for our kayak uh, broke. So Steve has fixed it, fixed it in inverted commas. We don't actually know if it's fixed. We haven't tied it yet. So that's going to be a job in a second to check that it works. Is, is this your packing? It's not my department, it's your garage. And then <laughs> finally, last but no means least, <sighs> kayak. Yes. Love a bit of kayaking. But like Joel just said, I'm just going to give it a once over now before we put it in to check the pump works. Kayak. We've had two kayaks before this aquamarine one. Um, the first, I think the first two were kind of Audi Lidl, Middle Isle special buy things. And they were like the rubbery ones and they just didn't last. Um, we had a couple of goes, but they just didn't last. So we made um, the decision a couple of years ago to invest in a really good one. So it's like a canvas covered one. Um, we've done Loch Lomond, Loch Ness in it. Um, yeah, you've, Steve's been on loads of river trips with his friends. Um, we did St. Neots in it. That was lovely, wasn't it, doing it along there? What did we do in it? Where? St. Neots. St. Neots, that's correct. Yeah. What is it not? St. Neots. Apparently I was said it wrong. Um, yeah, and then hopefully when we get um, our narrow boat, it'll be great fun for going, at, going out in that as well. Right, let's check if the kayak actually blows up. I'm sorry, what are you what's this break you're having? We're busy preparing for Europe. I'm messaging your brother. What about? <laughs> what about? Shoe shoelace tying. Well, can't he do it either? Is it running the family? No, he can do it fine. It's obviously a woman thing. Oh, okay. Right. Um, how was your repair job? Oh! The, the duff from above. Oh. Shit. Pardon? It was awful. Oh dear, not repaired. Have you managed to find a new one? No, I can't multitask. Yes, it's the crow from above. Crow from no, below. Crow from below or dove from, from above. above. Yes, I found a new one. It's coming. It was either £53 delivery for next week or 50 five, £53 pound delivery to get it next week. £53? £53 or um, £5.99 the week after. Whoa. 
So I went for the 53 one because I want to get it. So you better not have. Right, we've got a few more bits to put in. The hounds are desperate. <laughs> the other one's there now to see what we're up to. Okay, we keep going to the garage because we've tidy the garage we keep finding things that we should have in the van um so we've got this flexible funnel that we use with the jerry can of water if we need that so you can't forget that because that would be fun we've also got the ridiculously long hose pipe if you're like away away from your water point but it's really really annoying to put back on so i've got two slightly shorter ones which are much easier to use and that's it. Oh, one last thing. I'm even in the shot. Uh -huh. In case for any reason you need to get on the roof, I've got the ladder. So yeah, fold up ladder. Useful for keeping the solar clean. Right, ready to go. <laughs> so that's all the stuff we've got to put in. Now I've just got to pack it. This is Cheryl's packing it's and not. organization. I was just showing people. Now now let me show you, by the magic of the camera, how it is done properly. Ta -da! Proper packed garage. Right, Europe ready. But before that, we've just got a couple of other things we want to talk to you about. Okay, so some other things we have done in preparation for our trip is sort our... Lives out. <laughs> our mobiles out. Um, so we are both with Tesco Mobile, we've got unlimited data and we've double checked we've got our roaming in Europe. We've also got our internet in our van and that's with ID Mobile, so a different network. So hopefully then we've covered um, and that is also for Europe. Failing that, we've packed a pigeon, um, some smoky stuff for some smoke signals and uh, a small child. Yeah, and another top tip we've had, which I haven't actually done yet, is make sure that the areas we're going to we've downloaded the google maps so that we don't have any sort oh, yeah. of loading issues you know as you're getting off a ferry or whatever that they're all downloaded ready to use um because we know how to wing it and make it up as we go along we're not really winging it are we we're like prep 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 yeah but it's those things that could make it stressful well we are winging or Make it more of an adventure if you don't. Oh, great. Yeah, well, I can imagine the adventure when you're set. They go, tell me which way to drive. And I'll say, I don't know. And then you exactly. shout at me. Exactly. Just go, turn left in. Let's see what happens. But you don't. You'd shout at me about because you're too busy trying not to run over cyclists. So money, we are going to be using yes, the Wise Pay app. Um, so basically, that gives you a visa physical visa card so you can get cash out of cash machines and then it gives you unlimited digital cards so if you're anywhere and you want to pay for something but it could be a little bit shady you can just open a new card from the same account um, and then that person has only got the details for that card and then you can delete that card How after you that? paid. I haven't got a card. You just pay a via... Digital. You can do it digitally. Uh, di digitally. Digitally. Also you can put money into the account and transfer it into euros and then we can pay for everything in euros so we don't have problems with like varying exchange rates and all of that so we've got some euros loaded up on that already um plus we've got the physical card as well and we need some cash do you say cash yes yeah, so cash. there are a few people have advised us like things like toilets in the netherlands like in the big city um you need coins to be able to use a toilet if you want to and Germany people a lot of people have been telling us that German campsites in particular you don't pay with card or transfer they want cash so we're just going to make sure that we get some euros out and make sure we've got those but I think we just gonna use a cash machine when we get there get them out when we get there unless you want to get some at the Bureau de Change à la Tesco before we go oh is that where Bergerac's from what that was, I remember that from Bergerac or was that the different word for the police? I can't remember. If you're old like me, you'll remember oh, Bergerac. Bureau, yeah. If you're not, then Bureau to something. Possibly. We'll cut that bit out. Anyway, um, we have also ordered a camping car pass for France. Um, you can get have them we? at... Yeah, that was that thing I was talking to you about the other day. 
you just didn't understand it then. No. So there's lots of airs in and campsites in France where you can use the camping car pass. It's essentially like a membership card, um, and then you can prepay, like you can upload money onto it and use that as credits for at the machines, or you can just use the machines. But you well, need an actual card. You need the actual card to like be a sticker in your windscreen. Nope, you need the actual card to be able to access and pay for the air. So let's just go to Wales. It's too confusing. <laughs> So that's booked, that's hopefully will arrive soon. The other things we'll use are search for sites, um, park for night, um, and then you have got that new app that um, Andy from Extreme Motorhome Adventures yeah. recommended, which was called Wikilock. Yep. Wikilock. I have got Wikilock, a new app, which is a brilliant app, but I cannot remember what it does. What does it do? That was the one for the walks. Oh, yeah, that's for walks and things. So, that's it, I remember now. So, loads of people basically plotted their routes on it, and you can use it to walk in that area out and work out distances. It's got directions so you don't hopefully get lost. Yeah. And, and then you the... can download them as well. So, if you haven't got a signal, it all downloads download. ready. Yeah. And people can post photos so you know, kind of, oh, that waterfall looks really nice. I'm going to yeah, go on a walk one. to that. So, we'll hopefully give that a go in Europe. It's well tested, and you can follow like people so we can follow Andy and Michelle's things that's what you said yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> <laughs> right so I think unless you lovely people tell us anything Please different do. I mean is there anything we've forgotten clearly we're going to pack food and clothes we know restrictions on we can't take meat and we can't take dairy into any of the EU countries cheers Brexit um it's not like that before anyway. No. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, as anybody who watches any of our videos across the past couple of years we've been doing this, we haven't got a clue. We're making up as we're going along. Um, and it's all fun and games. So please let us know if you've got any suggestions, things we've forgotten about. Also, over the past week, we've had like a mega increase in subscribers. Loads of people have joined us. So thank you very much and welcome to the channel. Um, it's really great to have you along board, on board. So... Yeah, thank you very much yeah. for that. Really appreciate it. That's really good. So we will obviously take you with us along the whole trip. If there's anything in particular you want us to um, capture, record, film. Um, Unlucky because we probably forget. No, we won't. Please <laughs> let us know if there's anything in particular or how does that work or whatever. Then we'll, we'll try and show it. And, and we'll we'll just record it as we normally do in our yeah. haphazardy kind of way. Um, it is as it is. There's no dodgy faking it around here no and actually we get a lot of comments that people like that we keep it real um yeah so we'll let you know what kind of food we pack obviously we're going to take clothes pants sorry and costumes there you go of clothes stuff. and pants <laughs> um and yeah so we'll be hitting the road in a couple of weeks off on our yeah. first ever european journey in nessa and it's now three o'clock in the afternoon i've not had any lunch thus i'm not very engaged apologies oh, for that I'm little violin. very hungry at the moment are you hungry? I'm hungry. Oh my gosh. Come on. Oh, 11 o'clock. I haven't had a cup of tea either yet today. Oh, I've go made make, you coffee. I'm going to go and make my own cup of tea as well. I've made you coffee. Where is it? You had it this morning. I've not had anything. <laughs> oh, honestly, would you like me to lead you to the kitchen and show you how to use the appliances? No, she'd like to make me a cup of tea. Anyway, thanks for watching, folks. Don't forget, like and subscribe, ding the bell, tell all your friends about us. We'll see you next time. Next time. <laughs> Cheers. Bye.